Locate the section with the aluminum weather strip retainer fastened to one edge. The aluminum weather strip retainer is on the bottom edge of the bottom section. Place this section on the sawhorses face down. Locate the bottom brackets and bend and break them apart by hand along the end tabs as shown here. Next, insert the safety tabs on the bottom bracket into the slots on the end style of the door, then slide the bottom bracket up to fully engage the tabs. Note that failure to properly engage the safety tabs on the bottom bracket into the slots on the edge of the door can result in severe injury when the spring tension is applied. Now use two number 14 by 5 8 inch sheet metal screws to attach the bottom brackets to the bottom corners of the section. Notice that the screws go into the end styles. If you have a premium steel carriage house door like this one, use two self-tapping screws in the brackets on the end style. Next, hook the looped ends of the steel lift cable over the buttons on the bottom brackets. If your door came with standard extension springs like this, the lift cables are the longer and smaller diameter of the two sets of cable. We will install the hinges next. Notice that they are identified by numbers 1, 2, 3, and sometimes 4 if you have a 5 section door. Locate the required amount of number 1 hinges needed for the first section and attach them to the door where each pair of pre-punched holes are located along the top edge using number 14 by 5 8 inch sheet metal screws. Note that the number of the end hinges matches its corresponding section. Center hinges are always number one hinges. The next step depends on your door thickness, the width of your end style, the type of door you purchased, and if your door is wind code rated. Refer to your manual or supplemental manual at this time for specific details on attaching your reinforcement strut or struts if applicable. Each door has a different type of lift handle attachment. Please refer to your manual or supplemental manual for your lift handle instructions. Now we are ready to install the door sections. Using your manual or supplemental manual, determine the order that the sections will be installed and any other important items to note. Start by placing the bottom section in the opening so that it lies against the stop molding and centered from side to side. Place a level on the section and use a piece of wood under one end or the other, if necessary, to make the section level. Remove the level and toe nail a 3 inch nail into the jams at each end to hold it in place. Make sure the nails are in firmly, but not to the point where they can't be removed later. Then place the next appropriate section face down on the sawhorses. If your door is pre-drilled for a lock, this section will be the one with the holes in the center of the panel face. If your door doesn't have pre-drilled holes for your lock, a template will be included with the lock instructions. If you have a keyed lock you wish to install, now's the time to do so. Follow the supplemental instructions included with the lock hardware. Next, identify the bottom edge and attach a number 2 hinge to each end at the top edge using number 14 by 5 8 inch sheet metal screws. Go ahead and attach a number 1 hinge to all other pre-punched holes along the top edge of the section. Also, in this case, install the strut as before. Now you can place the second section on top of the first section. This particular door has alignment strips to help in aligning the door sections. Then toenail in 3 inch nails to secure the door sections to the jams at each end. Next, attach the hinges from the top of the first section to the bottom of the second. We are now ready to place the third section on the sawhorses and attach number 3 hinges to the ends at the top edge of the section and number 1 hinges to each pair of pre-punched holes along the top edge using number 14 by 5 8 inch sheet metal screws. Refer to your manual or supplemental manual to determine the number of struts required and proper attachment methods. Next, place the third section on top of the other sections and toenail in place as before. Attach the hinges from the top of the previous section to the bottom of this section. If you have two sections left, repeat what you just did on the last section using number four hinges on the end of the top edge of this section 
and number one hinges to all other pre-punched holes along the top edge. Now we are ready to place the last section on the sawhorses. Attach a strut if it is part of your configuration. If you'll be using an automatic door opener, you need to provide a mounting point for the opener to be attached. Do not install the bracket supplied with the opener. An opener bracket kit specifically designed for your door may be included or may be purchased as an option. If you have this attachment, follow the instructions provided with the kit. Otherwise, prepare the door for use with your opener by following your specific manual or supplemental manual. Note, you may need to purchase punched angle to prepare your attachment area. This is important. If your door is going to be equipped with an automatic garage door opener, make sure that the door is always unlocked when the opener is being used. This will avoid damage to the door. Next, attach the top roller brackets using three number 14 by 5 8 inch sheet metal screws. Note that the top of the bracket goes into the bottom hinge hole and the bottom of the bracket goes into the smaller holes, either six and a quarter inches or eight inches down from the top of the section depending on the door model. Now you can place the top section on top of the other sections and toenail in place as before. Attach the hinges from the top of the previous section to the bottom of this section. To finish up, place a roller in the top and bottom brackets and in the tubes in each of the hinges at the ends of each section. Notice that some hinges have two tubes. Place the roller in the tube that is farthest from the face of the door. Now it's time for the tracks. Before we begin, note that the brackets may already be riveted in place. If additional adjustment is required, the rivets can be drilled out and the brackets can be reattached with track bolts and flange nuts. If your jams are pressure treated and treated after January 2004, they are treated with chemicals that have highly corrosive effects on metal fasteners. See your manual or supplemental manual for important corrosion prevention information. Now, have your assistant hold the door sections in place and take out the nails on one side. Place the track over the rollers of the door so that the rollers are all the way into the hinges, leaving about one half inch between the edge of the door and the track. Do not force the track or the door may bind. Lift the track about one half inch off the floor. Wood splints can be used to hold the track in position. Using a 3 8 inch drill bit, drill pilot holes at each lag screw position to avoid splitting the wood. Fasten the flag bracket and track brackets loosely to the jam. Note that the tops of both vertical tracks must be level with each other. Check this by measuring the distance from the top of the door to the top of the bracket for each side, making sure that they're the same. Check that everything is plumb and then tighten all the lag screws. Repeat this process for the other side. Make sure that all brackets are attached to the wood jams only. Do not attempt to attach any bracket to drywall. Next, temporarily support the rear end of the horizontal track using a rope tied to an overhead truss, a support bracket, or a ladder. Place the track over the roller in the top bracket and attach the curved end of the horizontal track to the flag bracket with two 1 quarter inch by 5 8 inch track bolts and 1 quarter inch flange nuts so that the heads of the screws are on the inside of the track. Attach the end of the horizontal angle to the top of the flag bracket with a 3 8 inch by 3 quarter inch carriage bolt and 3 8 inch hex nut. Use the top set of slots for 15 inch radius track, the middle set of slots for 12 inch radius track, and the bottom set of slots for low headroom track. The horizontal and vertical track must join together to form a continuous channel for the rollers. If you do not have rear track hangers installed already, check your manual for rear track hanger construction. Placement of rear track hangers is critical for the door to operate properly. Note that the rear track hangers should not be mounted any farther than 6 inches from the end of the horizontal track. 
Now attach a bolt at least one inch long through the end of each track to stop the door at the end of its travel. The rear track hangers should hold the horizontal track level and square to the door. Squareness should be measured by comparing two diagonal distances. First, the distance from the top left-hand corner of the door to the rear of the right-hand horizontal track, and second, the distance from the top right-hand corner of the door to the rear of the left-hand horizontal track. Adjust the position of the tracks if the squareness distance are not within one half inch of each other. Note that the horizontal track can be out of level up to one inch from the front jam to the rear track hanger. With the track installed, the top door section can now be properly adjusted. With the slide on the top bracket loose, force the top of the door against the stop molding or door jam. Pull the roller towards you so that it's tight against the groove in the track and tighten the slide bolts. Our door is equipped with an inside slide bolt. Install the inside slide bolt on the end style of the second section by using four number 14 by 5 8 inch hex head sheet metal screws for steel doors or four 1 quarter inch by 1 inch lag screws for wood doors. The slide bolt rests against the top of one of the rectangular engaging slots in the vertical track. Proper alignment is easier to achieve by using the track as a guide. Note that it may be necessary to knock out the slug in the vertical track to open the slot for lock engagement. Remove the slug by inserting a screwdriver in the slot and twisting the slug out. Congratulations! You have finished this section of the installation. To continue, the next thing to do is pick the type of spring you have from the upcoming menu. Reminder, even if you have an automatic door opener, you still must install springs for proper operation of your door.